Hey everybody, this is Amanda from Amanda's Budgets. I just wanted to come here and wish everybody a happy Memorial Day. I appreciate everybody who watches my channel, but we're here to talk about some nitty gritty things. This money here is all from my 200 envelope challenge. I did not complete this challenge, but that's okay. It is what it is. You can only do what you can with what you got. I have a medical procedure coming up. I think a lot of confusion came with that comment in my last video. This is for our emergency fund. I'm not using this to float my medical um, three-day quote-unquote vacation. <laughs> I am going to be having a thyroid ablation coming up in the beginning of um, June, which is crazy to say June already because I feel like June just doesn't seem like the month that needs to be happening right now. I feel like I'm six months behind on all the things that I wanted to do and all the things I had been planning, and that's what I'm here to talk about today. Are you struggling to make your goals? Are you struggling to stop starting over? You're starting a savings challenge. You're stuffing money into your sinking funds, but you're having to start over. I feel you, boo. This is not me starting over. This is me saying, I can't do this anymore. I have to have an emergency fund of some sort and, and it needs to be like a real real emergency for me to grab money out of this amount of cash <laughs> by the way this is all going to be condensed i'm going to bring this to the bank right now it's in my safe place and we're going to put that into our sinking funds binder our sinking funds are going to look a little different how we do sinking funds are going to look a little different um, I'm going to be working on maybe one or two envelopes at a time. We're going to be doing some savings challenges. We're going to do some minis. We're going to go back to save day Sunday. I have a super fun savings night coming that I want you to join with me. So it's going to be part of a freebie I'm going to be giving away. Um, it's going to be a continuous thing though. So if I have new challenges or new things coming up, you will, if you want to play along or if you don't, that's okay. But if you do, you will have to purchase the kits from my shop, but I think it'll be fun. But if you are struggling, you are paying your bills barely to the point where you're like, eh, bestie, I have $5 left over by the time I pay all my bills. I didn't go to the store. I did not overspend. I bought the things that I needed. I have children that have needs. I went to buy clothes for, you know, the new season. We have summer coming up and I blew my budget by 50 bucks, um, $100 per kid, whatever that may be. Um, I started looking into summer child care. A lot of people get very confused on our child care situation. So I have my kids every other week. So that means that I have to pay for child care every other week if, I, if one of us doesn't work. Jordan, my husband, is going to be the one that's going to be working the hourly job and I'm going to be gig working because that's what's going to work best for us this summer. We're going to give it a shot. It is a seasonal job, I will say. The reason he hasn't taken anything since the car wash job and the pizza place, they are duly owned by the same person for, for two, two main reasons. <clears throat> time is money. Time is money and we don't have a lot of time in a day. And if you're not making enough money to pay the bills, it's not going to cut it. Raise your hand if you've been there a million times over. Okay? 
you go to a job, you're working 40 hours a week, you get your paycheck, your bills are 2800 to survive the entirety of the month. That's including your housing, your gas, your um, very limited food, your basic bills. You're living in the lowest, lowest cost housing that you can find in your state. That's me. That's me, bestie. And even though you've made a lot of lifestyle changes, you're like, wow, that's 760 bucks for two, two weeks of working went to nowhere. It literally went into the galaxy of the abyss of nowhere. It came back with zero. You're in the hole. Even with two of us working, it's very hard, but I can't afford daycare. I dropped off um, some items to a customer doing gig working. And I drop off at this house a lot and I said, hey, what do you do? Do you like take care of elderly people? Like, what do you do? Because she has a bunch of signs on her door. I do daycare. I do in-home daycare. I'm like, hey, will you text me? your information and tell me how much it would cost per kid for part-time because it's the every other week. Some daycares or babysitters don't allow you to do the part-time situation unless it's a weekly basis that they're coming in. So I've had people tell me since, well, this is compared to last year, well, I have a full-time spot open, so you have to pay full-time even though your child is only going part-time because my time is money as well, right? And this person stated that it would be 600 a week for one child. That's $1,200 a month. Okay, why would I go to work? <laughs> what would I go to work for? If I'm going to go work at a job that I've been working at, food, retail, customer service, our average wage, even if I went to the next town, would be 15, 16 bucks an hour. Now, mind you, we only have one car. One car. So, that's the answer. That's the answer to everyone's questions I've been asked a million times on why don't you put your children in daycare while you're working, while you're both working in the summertime? The answer is $1,200 is too much. Not only that, but I have a child with extra needs. When you have a child with extra needs, they don't want to watch your child. I'm sorry, it's, it's not to be a ASS about it, but they just don't want to. They're difficult. They're hard. My oldest son is very, very hard. I don't talk about it in a lot of videos because it's not my place to share his life. So I will briefly just tell you it's hard. He is a hard kid to work with. Love him dearly. Love him to the moon and back. He is my first baby. I can handle it. Some can't. Okay, so we'll leave it at that. If you have a kid with extra needs or on the spectrum, there could be some behavior issues that you have to deal with, okay? So, we're seeing our income increase, but we're seeing our bills increase twice the fold in that. So, we're just hanging on like the rest of you. So, Bestie, if you are feeling it, if you are feeling like you are being crushed by life right now, everything is expensive, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm back to saving dollars, it's okay, you and me both, boo-boo, you and me both, it's okay to go, hey, this is my new expectation, we're not going to eat out tonight. We're not going to go sit in the line at Chick-fil-A. And everyone asked me in the video before this, 
Why do you use Chick-fil-A as a reference? Number one, I've worked there. Number two, I know the prices there are very high. And the line in my area goes all the way out to the main street, almost to the highway. Boo boo. You can sit in line at Chick-fil-A when you're barely making it and you're trying to save some money. Not only that, but our income doesn't fit those situations. Yes, I have a second channel. It's for cooking. You're going to see a lot of gardening. You're going to see a lot of homemade meals. I cook 99% of the bills. By the way, Miss Jones decided to come and look out the window. Our baby kitty. You're going to see me bare bones cooking on that channel. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be the most delicious things that I could possibly buy at another restaurant. I do not have restaurant quality um, kitchen. I don't have a restaurant kitchen. Miss Joan, please do not eat my colored pencils, ma'am. Please do not do that. Anyway, back to it. You're struggling to save. You've been trying to buy a house. There are so many alternatives to housing, but they're getting more and more expensive. I'm seeing elderly people, you guys, buy ho or buy uh, travel trailers for anywhere from five thousand to twenty thousand dollars. It's sick. I am seeing so many people out there buying a 1989 and if you know 1989 <laughs> minus 2024 <laughs> is 35 so if the mobile home not mobile home uh travel trailer uh motor home there we go motor home that was the word i was looking for is as old as your daughter and you're trying to buy a mo motor home or a travel trailer. Um, and I, I may not be referencing this to a personal situation or not. Um, or looking into it and you're like, where am I going to park it? Okay, so there's so many rules. There are parks all over the place that allow motor homes, travel trailers, pole trailers, fifth wheels, they're in this park that I live in, but they are <clears throat> needing to be 10 years or newer to be in a park. So buying a 35 year old home on wheels, pull behind, drivable, is not going to suffice to anything. Where are you going to park it? Um, you could park it in the Badlands, you could park it in the state that you live in park area, but if you get caught, it's a fine. Most of the time, a person of law will come and give you a warning. So, living on the mobile is not always doable. There are places in Arizona. I have a friend that does Outlander stuff, and she lives in her rig and her little tiny travel trailer that she pulls behind. And she has a hard time finding a place to park. You can only live in a Walmart parking lot so long. And not all Walmarts allow that. Here in Oregon, they don't allow you to park and stay overnight anymore, specifically in my area. There are truck stops, but you can only stay there 72 hours before you have to move. And you can't come back continuously. There are people buying mobile homes like mine. Mine is 
$5,000. Or was 5000 With the roof repair, a little over two grand on that. So a little over 7000 If we're counting that. That's still not bad. I don't own the lot that my house sits on. My space rent which is my lot rent is 550. Still not bad. Water, sewage, garbage included. I do not have gas, so I only have to pay for to truly live. Truly live this is not including transportation, food or any other necessities. If I only if I was to never leave this home, and I worked from home and I lived off the very bare basics and I didn't have a car payment, I would only really have to pay for my space rent, my car insurance or insurance in general, my electricity, my phones, and my internet. I'm hoping that happens one day. <laughs> I'm hoping it happens one day. I, I technically only have a couple more years left on my car. And that's if I don't continue to pay that little bitty extra onto my payment every single month. Every dollar counts. So far, paying a little bit extra on my car every single month has brought me down three months on my on my car loan over the extended time I've been doing that which has been years now. Three payments is better than zero that I didn't have to pay interest on because they're principal payments. And we're not even here to talk about debt. We're here just to talk about the nitty gritty of life. Life is so expensive. You go to the store. If you're not careful, bestie, you can spend $400, $500, $600 in one single grocery shop. Electricity has gone up. It's going to be summertime. This is the highest my bill has been in years. My last month's bill was... 157 or 155 something like that and comparatively from last year's bill I was only paying about 75 74 dollars by now because I'm not turning the heat on I'm not using my AC unit yet I'm not doing any of those things so why is my bill so freaking high that's what i would like to know why is it so freaking high okay phone bill phone phone bills <clears throat> have gone up quite a bit and i'm sorry you guys i have really bad allergies today phone bill has gone up and down but going to find a new phone company to make it lower with doing what I do with gig working and having to use maps and data all the time is a bit expensive. Somebody's like, go to Mint Mobile. We don't have Mint Mobile in our area, okay? We just don't have it. It's not supported yet. There are so many bills that are going up. So many things that I'm sure some of you guys are like, I'm done. I can't do this. I'm done cash stuffing. Okay. So let me give you a peace of mind. Please, please let me give you a peace of mind. I was homeless, living in my vehicle. I had an eviction. I had 10 grand worth of debt keeping me from moving into a place. Over 5,000 of that was to a previous, previous apartment, meaning that I moved from one apartment to another before that bill occurred, so the other apartment allowed me to move in because they did not know about it. Almost six, 
thousand dollars, six thousand to that debt. That is because they broke my lease and stated that we could not stay because of income. I wasn't going to make the income the new owners were going to look for. So I thought, well, hey, I'm just getting a 90 day notice. No, no. They made me pay for the remainder of a few months of my rent plus whatever extra cleaning fee. And, and here's the gig. When you're a renter and they are a company, their maintenance ban is required to find something. Required to find something to charge you for. So here I was sitting in my new apartment, not knowing that that was accruing. I knew nothing of my credit score. I knew nothing about credit. I didn't have a credit card. I was told credit cards are bad, which is not true. It's just about utilizing them correctly. And I have had my ups and downs with that, but I didn't have my first credit card until I was almost 30 years old, 20, 27, 28 years old. Okay. I had racked up all this debt. I was working two jobs. I couldn't do that now. I could, I could not do that right now. There was something called the pandemic money. So when I made references to this in a lot of different videos where I was like, well, the pandemic money is gone. And I kept listening to this on the news. So this is what I was like thinking. I'm like, well, I only got, you know, X amount of checks from the government, right? Like the rest of us. That is not the pandemic money they are talking about. They're talking about the hourly wage being the highest it had been in ever and ever. I was getting paid more than than I do now for jobs I was doing before. And then I wonder why I was getting pissed off about all these new wages. I'm like, well, wait the heck a minute. Um, hello? So a friend of mine, or a friend of my husband's, took over the pizza place that I was running. He took over my spot, and he makes four dollars less an hour than I did. Without that pandemic pay, I don't think I could have paid off my debt that fast twice in a row. I paid off my debt in 10 months after finding Dave Ramsey, after going through a couple of organ programs to talk about, you know, like how to pay off your debt and the proper way to go about it, and all the different things. Paying off your debt is going to help you. But ultimately, right now, the things that are killing us financially are cost of living, food, transportation, and utilities. All these things have gone up so much, such a large percentage, it's sick. So how are you supposed to get out of debt if you are treading water? It's okay to tread water. It's okay to do it $1 at a time. I'm going to let you know, bestie, I'm struggling too. I truly am struggling. I am struggling to find my roots. I'm struggling to figure out which, which envelope do I fund next. So if you're on a debt journey and you're thinking to my, yourself like I was thinking to myself five years ago, sitting in my car going, how am I going to pay my debts off? I had this little red notebook, which I showed you guys. I'm not, I don't have it offhand now, but I wrote every, each page had its own debt on it. Some of them were scratched off, highlighted off. Uh, starred next to it, paid, but then it got hard. So your de your debt journey is going to be different from mine. I I did my debt journey in a different time in a different place. 
It doesn't mean it's impossible. It just means it's going to be harder. If you have been trying to buy a house, Bestie, and you have your down payment or what you thought was going to be your down payment, your 20%, maybe you only have 10%. Maybe you only have 10 grand saved and you're trying to go for the FHA loan and you're like, I'm doing this this year. 2024 is going to be my year and I'm going to be with key in hand. If you're not there, it's not your fault. None of this is your fault. You're not going to have opportunities to recrunch your numbers to try to figure out where you're going to be buying this house because there's no re recrunching of numbers. Housing is so freaking high. Interest rates are so high. I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest buying a house to anybody right now. The interest rate is going to kill you. It's expensive. Um, not only that, but your down payment you thought you had is not going to be enough. Most lenders in my area won't even look at you unless you have $100,000 minimum. Because housing here costs 600 to more. <laughs> I'll just say more. I'll be nice. We'll say more. 600 and up <laughs> on housing. To buy a single family, two to three bedroom house, one to two bedroom, or one to two bathroom. No yard. You can see your, your neighbor flush from your bathroom window. You have a tiny square. This is your square of grass in your yard, in your front yard. You have a tiny space where you can garden. $600,000. I saw a cute little white house in the middle of nowhere on the way home from the city. I mean, this is like Amanda's perfect house. It's a cute little white house and it's got a little mother's den little house behind it. It doesn't have a garage. It just has this fenced plot of land. It's very plain. So I can do anything with this house, right? I'm thinking to myself, what would I need goal-wise to be able to buy this house? So just out of curiosity last night, I just started looking on Zillow. And I'm like, oh, I found, found that house. I found it. I found it, boo-boo. Let me tell you how much it is. That's how much it is. And it has less land than I thought. It doesn't even have two full acres of land. But it's a cute little house. But I mean, it it's in the middle of nowhere. It's in the boonies. For that price I flashed to you on that screen, whoo boy. So bestie, if you're if you're wanting to buy a house. Be patient. And I'm telling you right now, patience had to become a part of my vocabulary while sleeping in a car. And every day I felt like I was a ticking time bomb, about ready to freaking explode. I wanted to scream. I wanted to drive down the highway with my music blaring, flipping the world off. I wanted to be like, screw this. This sucks. I'm not doing this anymore. I don't care if I'm homeless. I can't I can't keep on with this this whole program that I'm doing and it's not working. So I'm going to stop. Every day I felt like that. I flipped the world off and then I went on to the that day. I told myself it's okay to have a party for myself to say, "Hey, F this, flip the world off." Um cry about it, scream about it. Punch your back seat if you have to. Scream out into the universe, I can't do this anymore. It's not working. 
I allowed myself to do that a few times a week to allow myself to feel better. Even if it was for one minute of feeling better, I wasn't going to take my frustration and anger out on my family. I wasn't going to tell my friends every day how much it sucked that I was in debt and I had an eviction and I couldn't rent an apartment and I might have to buy a house and all those other things, all these other things. I, I had no hopes, no dreams, no feeling of relief. I was treading water. It's okay to say, hey, F it for an hour. F it all for an hour. I'm allowed to have a pity party for myself because today is hard. It's okay to have that moment. It's okay to roll down your window on the highway and scream, F you universe. I am my own worst enemy at times. I can sit here and pick apart every one of these binders I can sit here and pick apart every single savings challenge. If I coulda, woulda, shoulda, if I had, I could rewrite out my budget 50 times, and I do sometimes in a month. This month, I'm letting it be. It's going to be what it's going to be, boo-boo, and that's okay. It is what it is. I did revise the one from the video because I was like, girl, <laughs> What you thinking? <laughs> are you... Are, what are you thinking? And it, it had nothing to do with my spending. I just had to reevaluate what bills were going to get paid when. And how. So that way it made more sense. So the total doesn't change. But I had to be nice to myself and say, Hey, <laughs> let me pat you on the shoulder. Hey, baby, we can't do that today. That ain't happening. <laughs> boo boo, that, that ain't happening. <laughs> That's some crazy people talk. So, it's okay. It's okay to be like, hey Amanda, in the comments below, I've been trying to buy a house for 10 years and I'm still not there yet. How did you get there? Luck and timing. Those were my only two, two factors, luck and timing. And I pulled every single dollar I had in every single one of these these binders, envelopes. I went to my bank account and I pulled every single last cent I had. I literally, it, it, it was luck. Timing and luck. I, I, I don't even know how else to explain it. And it's okay to live in a mobile home. It's okay to live in a manufactured home. It's okay to buy a travel trailer, and if you have a place to park it, live in it. It's okay to think thoughts about buying a tiny house. I didn't mention tiny house because I feel like there's so many factors to tiny homes. Here in Oregon, it's really hard to find a place to park or to uh, put a tiny home. And if you have land, uh, tiny homes are not always permitted. And I don't know enough about it, but I know enough people that have gone through tiny home disasters. But if you can do it in your area and it fits your your pocketbook and, and you can afford it each month, you do you, baby. You do you. Because every state has different regulations. Every city you live in, it, it has a different county. Those things matter. Nothing in this world is perfect. You don't have to be perfect. I'm sure you can hear Miss Joan running down the hallway with her ball which by the way i appreciate everybody who bought animal food um who bought uh cat litter who bought kitty toys who has been very generous in that i did not forget about you just i get a lot of hate about my amazon wish list <laughs> but it all helps tremendously and Miss Joan is loving those toys. And Mr. Sab, our boy kitty, he loves those squishy ones that have the little sparkly bits on the outside, the little balls. He'll bring them to you. He'll come up to you and he'll he'll bring them to you and he thinks he's done the best thing of, of all time. Think of the silver lining. 
Think of the reason you are starting your journey. Why you're in the middle of your journey. Why you are having to revamp your journey. Why, while you sit here, re-crunch the numbers. Just remember, all you can do is what you can with what you've got. Because it's all you have to work with, bestie. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.